right. Good afternoon. I'm pleased to be here with Commissioner Garcia. Commissioner, thank you so much for your leadership in this issue and, and for, um, for being here today. So I'll give brief remarks. Commissioner Garcia will speak. Uh, then he will welcome Dr. Mustafa Beydoun from the Houston Advanced Research Center, uh, followed by Dr. Latrice Babin, our Director of Pollution Control Department. Uh, Chris John will send a video from the American Chemistry Council, and then we'll hear from Chief Christensen, our Harris County Fire Marshal. And these are all uh, individuals and leaders who've been working together to make our county healthier. Just about a year ago, thousands of residents uh, were roused out of bed by an explosion in the middle of the night. And just about two years ago, an ominous dark cloud hung over our county for days during the ITC fire. In between those events, there have been threats, some visible to our community, some not, flaring, fires, leaks, They've served as constant reminders of the years of underinvestment and neglect that Harris County has faced when it comes to monitoring and to protecting our environment and the continued threat from polluters. The bottom line is that no family in Harris County should have to worry about the air they breathe, the water they drink, or their environment whether you live in a fence line community or not, they shouldn't have to worry about the health of the environment in their neighborhood. Clean air, water, and a clean environment are human rights, and we will act and are acting accordingly to protect that right. Look, we're the nation's center for energy production, and our region is a petrochemical powerhouse which we're all proud of. These industries bring jobs and they bring prosperity to the wonderful county we call home. But I refuse to accept the premise that we have to choose between jobs and health. We don't have to. We can coexist, but it requires industry leaders who play by the rules and who are good neighbors. And that requires work, including monitoring, and enforcement on the part of Harris County. Commissioner Garcia will discuss an important new grant that will allow us to move forward with this work. But before he does that, I want to make clear that so long as I'm county judge, we will not have a reactive posture when it comes to protecting our environment. Today, I want to share with you how the investments we've made as a commissioner's court over the past two years will already make a meaningful difference in our ability to respond to environmental disasters. The actions we've taken thus far represent the most significant enhancement of county environmental protections in at least the last 30 years. Over the past two years, we've moved from a reactive posture to a proactive posture on monitoring. So let me start with talking about the investments we've made in monitoring. Those investments allow us to monitor air quality in our community even when there's not a disaster. Doing that puts us ahead of the game, uh, whether we see if there's something amiss, it helps us identify if there's an issue. It gives us vital information, baseline information, that we can compare when there's a disaster. So that way we know whether the environment is uh, worse or the readings are worse during an incident compared to the baseline day-to-day -day numbers. The grant today is part of the progress we're making in building a robust network of monitors all throughout Harris County. It's a start and more will be on the way, but already we have the ability to monitor the air from day to day and be proactive and ahead of the game when it comes to identifying what currently is in our environment. Remember during ITC, we were scrambling to monitor the air. We were scrambling to put that information together for the community who deserved it and wanted to see it. We were able to put it together with support from the state and private support, but Harris County didn't have the mobile monitoring units we needed. Never again. 
now we have the beginnings of this fixed network and mobile network of monitors. We have a fleet of trucks equipped with monitors that are get, getting painted with their pollution control stripes as we speak. And we're continuing to build that ability to monitor the quality of our environment. The second piece where we've made substantial progress is in holding polluters accountable. Bad actors shouldn't pollute the environment with impunity and get away with it. We're no longer simply looking the other way. We've hired dedicated environmental prosecutors to hold large polluters accountable in criminal court. And we have dedicated pollution control investigators to inspect areas that are not up to snuff. Our county attorney's office has taken proactive steps like lawsuits against Watson Manufacturing and Grinding following the explosion that caused three fatalities in February 2020. Like three lawsuits brought against ExxonMobil for explosions and several unauthorized releases of pollutants at its chemical plants in Harris County. And the pursuit of investigations into pollution in Kashmir Gardens resulting from a Union Pacific rail line and the cancer cluster that has now been identified. The final area in which we're making meaningful steps is transparency and disclosure. After the Watson manufacturing and grinding explosion, I visited with families inside their homes. Their roofs caved in, their windows shattered. I couldn't help but think what an atrocity it was that these folks didn't realize they lived next to a ticking time bomb. Residents deserve to know the dangers present in their community. They shouldn't find out in the middle of the night when an earth-shattering explosion rocks their home while their children sleep, or when floodwaters seep into their homes, or when their kids and their neighbor's kids are all diagnosed with leukemia. So we're working on a risk mapping tool that will make it easier to find out, just as residents should know whether they live in a floodplain, whether there's a chemical plant next door. Already, we're informing residents when a polluter next door is seeking permission from the state to pollute even more. When polluters seek waivers from regulatory authority, our departments now spring into action, informing the community so they can respond as necessary and join residents in opposing waivers when we can. And we're working on this mapping tool over the next several months. Our environment impacts the health of our families and our children. And today we have serious challenges, including the fact that your life expectancy can vary by 20 years, depending on what zip code in Harris County you live in. So while we're in some ways at the mercy of state and federal laws, which in many instances are sorely lacking, here at the county level, we're not gonna sit on our hands and look the other way when it comes to steps we know we can take that make a difference. And that's what uh, the work over the past two years is about and the grant that we're celebrating today as part of our monitoring network. So I'll repeat my remarks in Spanish and then we'll hear from Commissioner Garcia. Hace casi un año, miles de residentes se levantaron en medio de la noche por una explosión que se llevó a cabo. Y hace alrededor de dos años, una nube gris se extendió a través de todo nuestro condado por varios días durante el incendio de ITC. En medio de esos dos eventos han habido otras amenazas, incendios, derrames, algunos visibles a la comunidad, algunos invisibles, pero muchas amenazas que han impactado nuestro medio ambiente. Todo esto es un constante recordatorio de los años de subinversión y negligencia en cuanto a la protección ambiental de nuestro condado y la amenaza constante que enfrentamos por aquellas personas que contaminan. Ninguna familia en el condado Harris debería tenerse que preocupar acerca del aire que respiran, el agua que beben o la seguridad de su vecindario. El aire limpio, el agua limpia, un medio ambiente limpio son derechos humanos y trabajaremos por proteger esos derechos. Miren, yo sé que somos 
el centro de producción de energía de este país. Y nuestra región es una potencia petroquímica. Esa industria trae trabajos y trae una economía fuerte. Pero no acepto esta idea de que tenemos que elegir entre trabajos y salud. No es necesario. Podemos coexistir. Pero eso requiere líderes del sector que trabajan y siguen las reglas, que son buenos vecinos, que son responsables. Y eso también requiere trabajo por parte del Condado Harris, una red de monitoreo, la aplicación de las leyes y los parámetros que existen. El comisionado García va a hablar acerca de una subvención que hemos recibido muy importante que nos permite hacer eso. Pero antes de, de que hable el comisionado, quiero dejar muy claro que siempre y cuando sea yo juez del condado, no vamos a tener una postura reactiva en cuanto a la protección de nuestro medio ambiente. Hoy día quiero compartir cómo las inversiones que hemos hecho en los últimos dos años ya están marcando una diferencia en, en nuestra habilidad de responder a desastres ambientales. Las inversiones que hemos hecho representan eh, la acción más sustantiva que ha visto este condado en cuanto a temas ambientales en al menos 30 años. El primer punto es el monitoreo. Durante los últimos dos años hemos movido de una postura reactiva a una postura proactiva en cuanto al monitoreo del aire. Gracias a las inversiones que hemos hecho, estamos construyendo una red de monitoreo que nos permite entender cómo se está comportando el medio ambiente en todo momento y de esa manera identificar amenazas y tener una comparación de la contaminación base para comparar a lo que se ve durante un desastre. Recuerdan durante el incendio de ITC, estamos trabajando día y noche para intentar monitorear el aire y darle la información a la comunidad que necesitaban. Tuvimos que traer trabajadores del sector privado, apoyo por parte del Estado. No teníamos aquí los recursos necesarios para monitorear el aire. Pero ahora sí lo tenemos. tenemos estamos construyendo una red de monitoreo y ahora también tenemos un grupo de camiones equipados con el equipo necesario y que en este momento están siendo pintados con los logos del Departamento de Control de Contaminación. El segundo punto es el controlar y responder a aquellas personas que contaminan. Las, los contaminadores no deben poder simplemente contaminar y salirse con las suyas sin ninguna implicación. Y ya no vamos simplemente a mirar hacia otro lado. Hemos eh, contratado fiscales ambientales, hemos contratado investigadores dedicados para mantener esa presión y responder a los contaminadores que no siguen las leyes y no siguen las reglas. Y nuestro abogado de condado también ha sido proactivo en las demandas que han puesto. Una demanda contra Watson Manufacturing y Grand Grinding después de la explosión de febrero de 2020. Tres demandas contra ExxonMobil por dos explosiones y varios derrames que han habido en sus plantas químicas en el condado Harris. Y también el, en la investigación que se está haciendo en cuanto al grupo de cancerígeno que se ha identificado en el área de Kashmir Gardens. Finalmente, estamos trabajando en la transparencia e información. Después de la explosión de Watson and Grinding, fui a visitar a las familias, muchas familias latinas, en sus casas. Los techos se habían caído, las ventanas habían explotado. Y para mí fue trágico darme cuenta que esas familias no sabían que vivían al lado de una planta química. Los residentes merecen saber los peligros que existen en sus comunidades. No deberían darse en cuenta en medio de la noche, cuando una explosión explota sus ventanas, ni tampoco cuando el agua entra a sus casas en medio de la noche, ni cuando sus niños y los niños de los vecinos todos desarrollan leucemia. Los individuos, todos los residentes de nuestra comunidad, deben saber las amenazas y los peligros cerca de las cuales viven. Entonces estamos creando una herramienta, un mapa, que va a mapear el riesgo 
Así las personas sabrán no solo si viven en un plano de inundación, sino también si viven cerca a una planta química. Eso está en este momento en trabajo. Lo que ya tenemos es la habilidad de informar a los vecindarios cuando un contaminador está pidiendo permiso para contaminar aún más. Cuando una empresa contaminadora está pidiéndole al Estado permiso para aún más contaminación, estamos informándole a ese vecindario, trabajando con ellos para oponer ese permiso y muchas veces como condado op oponiendo nuestra oposición también a, a esos permisos. Nuestro ambiente impacta la salud de nuestras familias, de nuestros niños. Hay muchos retos muy serios, empezando por el hecho de que en nuestro condado la expectativa de vida varía 20 años, dependiendo el código postal. Hay muchas maneras en las cuales dependemos del Estado y del gobierno federal. Finalmente, nosotros no controlamos las leyes, son ellos. Pero aquí en el condado no vamos simplemente a sentarnos en nuestras manos, a decir que no hay nada que podamos hacer. Estamos haciendo todo lo posible por asegurarnos que haya un ambiente limpio y que haya justicia uh, y que toda la industria trabaje mano en mano con nosotros como buenos vecinos. Entonces ahora hablará el comisionado García, quien ha sido un líder en esta protección ambiental y en trabajar con la industria para que sean buenos vecinos. We'll hear now from Commissioner García, who, since we've both been at the, at the county, has been an incredible leader in pushing for this coexistence of industry and healthy families and has led the grant that we're going to hear about from him. Commissioner Garcia. Thank you, Judge uh, Hidalgo and um, your leadership in Harris County's government has had a phenomenal impact and you have faced some of the most incredible challenges. Uh, you're doing a phenomenal job and we're very, very proud. And instead of, uh, instead you've met every situation with incredible posture, calm, thoughtfulness, and a insurmountable data-driven approach. We thank you. But let us not forget that just weeks after Judge Hidalgo and I took our oath of office, uh, the first of what would seem like uh, never-ending crises uh, hit. That was the ITC fire. Before either of us, both brand new county commissioners or members of commissioner's court even had time to order office supplies, uh, we were informed of a major fire. The smoke coming from East Harris County could be seen practically in another time zone. It took nearly a week, a week, to get it under control. And in the meantime, uh, when the judge and I tried to find out what was actually burning, we were met with silence. Even before that event, I was thinking about how we could foster an environment in which industry could be a better neighbor to the thousands of Harris County residents that live and work in their shadows. If Harris County is going to continue as the engine of Texas and the United States economy, we would need neighborly relationships between all all stakeholders, business, government, and community organizations alike. Most, uh, rather, must be at the table when discussing how industry and residents coexist. We all must work together to ensure our economy can thrive while our, our communities are safe. Yes, it's our job to make sure uh, that incidents like this don't happen again. But we also want to create a culture that doesn't require a massive fire for people to know what's in the air that they breathe. This historic relationship we're building today takes a significant step, if not a leap, 
forward in making Harris County the model for how to be good neighbors. Entities all across the nation will follow our lead, I'm sure of it. Collaboration between industry, environmental groups, community-focused organizations, working alongside government will promote a healthy, safe, and economically strong area. That's how this $1 million grant from the American Chemistry Council, who I met with in Washington, D.C., soon after the ITC fire. This grant that ACC is making uh, is, will help Precinct 2 residents immensely. The American Chemistry Council understands that transparency, reliable data, and honest dialogue help create an environment of understanding and trust. And I'm excited about the Houston Advanced Research Center, or HARC, for coming to the table for this innovative partnership. We would not have accepted the generous offer without a commitment that an independent body would be on hand to help review the data. It's not often you see folks from a leading environmental group joining a Zoom with representatives from the petrochemical industry, all with the same goal of finding a way to provide the public with knowledge. Many of you know that I am a former law enforcement officer, spent years working the beat. Science isn't necessarily my strong suit, but bringing people together, de-escalating conflict is something I am good at. Ensuring that there is a conversation rather than a conflict. Ensuring that the community can take a hold of its future without necessarily waiting for law enforcement to arrive. Those things I am good at. And that's why uh, this agreement was intended uh, and started with a focus on, as President Biden has said, dialing down the rhetoric, lowering the temperature, and working through our disagreements with a common purpose. That is what this historic partnership is about today. Before I turn it over to the next speaker, I want to give uh, appropriate acknowledgement to several folks that helped to make this exciting announcement a reality. First, as I mentioned, I met with the American Chemistry Council soon after the ITC fire in Washington, D.C. Today, Chris John, President and CEO of ACC, uh, with whom I met with directly to secure this grant, we have Mustafa Beydoun from HARC, uh, our trusted, uh, who trusted our office to put together a plan that would work. And then, as Judge Hidalgo has acknowledged, Fire Marshal Chief Lori uh, Christensen, who is a true public servant. As a part of this grant, she'll be able to outfit her officers along with hazmat crews across the county with handheld monitors. And then there is Pollution Control Director Dr. Latrice Babin, who has turned the Pollution Control uh, Department into one this county can truly, truly be proud of, and to know that they are working for all of our residents. And let me just throw in a quick sidebar. Uh, she has even brought Elvis into the building. <laughs> Elvis is one of her uh, team members. Uh, you'll uh, probably meet him later. I would ask you to interview him before Elvis leaves the building. <laughs> and finally, I, I would, uh, it would be uh, just a catastrophe, worse than the ITC fire itself. If I didn't take a point of personal privilege to give appreciation 
gratitude and respect for someone uh, who has been an integral part of this uh, celebration. That is my uh, team member, my staff, particularly Kristen Lee. Kristen's official title is Precinct 2 Senior Policy Advisor. But her role encompasses so much more than that. Her passion for a better environment is what kept all the moving parts of this project rolling in the right direction. As a native of Laporte, Kristen understands better than most that uh, how important this work is. And realistically, we would not be here today without her tireless efforts uh, to make it happen. Sorry, sorry, Elvis, but Kristen is a bigger rock star. <laughs> and with that, let me uh, once again thank uh, Judge Hidalgo uh, for her leadership. This isn't part of my comments, but our tenure on county government started with a challenge of how to make county government responsive, how to make sure that residents who for decades have, had been long left unheard and unresponded to. Today, we're still working through a pandemic ensuring that there is no resident left behind is the hallmark of the work that Judge Hidalgo has brought to the table since her time as county judge. I'm proud of her. Uh, I am proud, more importantly, to be a team member of hers. And I will simply say, Harris County is better today than it was more than two years ago. And so with that, let me ask uh, Dr. Uh, Mustafa Beydoun, with Hark uh, to share a few words. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Commissioner Garcia, and thank you all. Uh, Hark is certainly very excited about this project and very excited to support uh, Harris County Pollution Control and Prevention and the other agencies on data analysis, air quality modeling support, meteorology analysis, uh, uh, mapping support, and, and what have you, to, to allow us to better understand and communicate data on emissions uh, during, before, and, and after events. Uh, we will also work on facilitating some desktop exercises to, to, to identify gaps that we've identified al along the way and make sure that they're properly filled and everybody is clear on, on, on how to improve things and, and continuously move forward. Uh, we'll have an independent science advisory committee made up of air quality modeling, uh, monitoring, meteorology experts from around the state, including folks with expertise on public health and environmental risk communications. Uh, we're very excited to work with our various pro project partners in and around Harris County. Uh, the various jurisdictions, uh, the community advocacy groups and environmental groups, uh, the various industrial partners, and we are looking for an in inclusive, all-encompassing collaborative effort here, which, which really touches on all the key stakeholders. Everybody from the community member all the way up to the industrial partner, to Harris County Pollution Control and Prevention, uh, of course the judge's office and Commissioner Garcia's office, uh, and really everybody in between. Our ultimate deliverable as part of this project will be a playbook that really synthesizes the project's findings, the strategies, the procedures, the roles and responsibilities, identifies threshold values for these various pollutants that we're all concerned about, and ultimately allows us to better uh, protect public health, which is really the driving force between, I think, everybody's role here uh, on this partnership. Uh, I'd like to now introduce uh, the, the Dr. Latrice Babin with Harris County Pollution Control and Prevention. Thank you, Ms. Babin. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Latrice Babin, the Director of Harris County Pollution Control Services. And I want to acknowledge Judge Lena Hidalgo and Commissioner Adrian Garcia here with me today. And thank you for your, your support and the Commissioner's, co Commissioner's Court for your support. I want to also acknowledge the American Chemical Council Foundation, Chemical, Chemistry Council Foundation for their generous grant. And today we recognize this unprecedented moment where industry representatives like the American Chemical Chemistry Society has come to the table to address one of the most pressing environmental concerns of the 21st century, air pollution. Harris County is the county of 4.7 million residents with roughly 1.2 million of them living in the unincorporated area of the county. 
Harris County is the hub of industrial activity with a high concentration of this activity along the Houston Ship Channel. However, due to a lack of zoning in Harris County, extremely hazardous and hazardous materials are peppered throughout the county. Harris County Pollution Control would like to thank the American Chemistry Foundation for their generous grant to the Harris County Community Air Monitoring Project and the Air Monitoring Network. The information gathered from these air monitors will provide communities with information that will empower them with knowledge and also allow the leadership of the county to make sound life safety decisions during adverse environmental conditions or a major facility incident. Yes, Harris County is said to be the most heavily monitored area in the nation with over 50 units. However, there are many gaps where this information is not available for citizens. This is what Harris County plans to fill. The implementation of these low cost air monitors will layer in those gaps in areas where residents will be allowed to see the air quality in the areas where they live, work, and play. Pollution control seeks to learn what the baseline air quality is in these areas. And we will, conduct that, we will do that by conducting blue sky monitoring as well as working with the Houston Advanced Research Center, or HARC, to determine what the historic data means. Community Air Monitoring Project activates the Harris County Pollution Control Environmental Response Team when there is a hazmat issue that happens. And we work in conjunction with the Harris County Fire Marshal's Office hazmat team, with the Harris County Office of Emergency Management, and Harris County Public Health in events where the community's health might be at risk. The commitment today shows that the ACC Foundation is committed to providing air monitoring capabilities that will increase our air monitoring network and will be placed in strategic locations in Precinct 2. This will provide vulnerable communities with empowering information that they need to better protect their families. As a regulatory agency, pollution control is open to fostering relationships with industry partners who genuinely want to be good neighbors to fence line communities. I hope that as we move forward together to meet the residents' needs and their concerns, we continue to work on a, on a creative approach. I look forward to future conversations on environmental stewardship and protection and how we will work together to make a difference through our service to the residents of Harris County. Thank you. And next, we will go to the monitor for a message from Chris John with the American Chemistry Council. Good afternoon. My name is Chris John and I'm president and CEO of the American Chemistry Council. I wish I could be there with you to help announce the launch of this important project and express my appreciation to our partners in person. We are glad to be part of this groundbreaking partnership, which will help protect workers and communities throughout the region. I'd especially like to thank Judge Hidalgo and Commissioner Garcia for opening the door to industry and inviting us to support this collaborative effort. Over the past year, we've enjoyed working closely with Commissioner Garcia's office, as well as Dr. Latrice Babin and Mustafa Baden. Despite the challenges of the pandemic, they've been unwavering in their commitment to find ways to use the ACC grant to deliver the greatest possible benefit to the public. One of the project's unique strengths is that in addition to providing local officials with an array of new air monitoring equipment, it also uses the grant to draw on the scientific expertise of HARC. This new air monitoring initiative is a good example of what can be accomplished when industry and local officials work together to achieve a common goal, improving environmental performance and taking care of communities. The chemical industry is deeply integrated into Harris County, an important part of its dynamic economy. More than, more than 70,000 men and women in Texas work in the business of chemistry, making it the largest chemical producing state in the country. We value the trust that our communities and employees have placed in our industry as part of our license to operate. And we know we have to dedicate ourselves to earn that trust each and every single day. Our member companies take their responsibility to be good neighbors very seriously. Many of them call Texas home and their commitment to safety is embodied in ACC's Responsible Care Program, the chemical industry's leading environmental health, safety and security performance initiative. 
So being part of this air monitoring effort was a natural fit for ACC and its members. One of the more important co components of responsible care obligates all ACC members to evaluate the circumstances of incidents and apply the lessons from their own experiences as well as the experiences of other companies. About the same time that Harris County embarked on its gap analysis, we assembled a group of safety experts from our member companies to examine the chem chemical facility incidents that occurred in Harris County in 2019. The group made several recommendations to enhance emergency response, including increasing the ability to monitor air quality and share information during an industrial incident. So thanks to this new partnership, mayors and county officials will have greater access to timely air quality information that they can use to help make decisions that safeguard public health and protect the environment. It's a tremendous team effort that will greatly improve the ability to collect, analyze, and share information about air quality, especially during an emergency. We believe that collaborative initiatives like this one are essential to safeguarding public health and protecting the environment. We often do our best work when we are focused on shared challenges that can bring us all together. We look forward to continuing to work with Harris County and HARC, and we hope that this project can serve as a model for working together in other parts of the country. Congratulations to everyone there today, and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Laurie Christensen. I'm the Harris County Fire Marshal. I'd like to thank Judge Hidalgo and Commissioner Garcia for this opportunity to, to talk to you about what's happened over the last two years uh, with the Harris County Hazmat Team. Over the last two years, we have worked with Commissioner's Court uh, to improve the Harris County Fire Marshal's Office HAZMAT team response uh, for assistance to our county partners, working with our stakeholders, such as Pollution Control, Public Health, Office of Emergency Management, so that we can better uh, help our citizens when they need us out in the community. Since the ITC incident in Chemco, we have been able to increase staffing, we have been able to increase our monitoring equipment, We've been able to obtain a west side station so that we can respond quicker to other parts of the county. We've also been able to work on some unmanned aircraft, which commonly known as drones, so that when an incident occurs, we can get a better picture and work with our partners and send that information out to them. This wouldn't have been possible without the commitment of commissioner's court. Uh, they, as you know, the gap analysis occurred and they have stood behind us and made sure that we had the equipment that we need, the additional staffing, and we feel that we can now better respond in the community when and if these incidences occur. And some of the things that we've done, we've ordered two uh, Harris County Agile Hazmat Quick Response Vehicles. In addition, we have two new Hazmat Foam Tenders uh, on order that are designed for industrial firefighting. We have an array of new uh, atmospheric air monitoring equipment, which we will be happy to show you. In addition, uh, Commissioner's Court is, is working on budget to get us the additional staffing we need to close out that gap analysis. Uh, we've also developed some, some critical GIS tools, working with our partners, working with our stakeholders, um, so that we better know what is out there. The other thing that we've done, which uh, is very unique, and we haven't seen this done in other parts of the country, is we determined how do we work with the community and our partners in industry. So we started what's called a pre-plan hazmat program. And what that means is our hazmat team goes in, meets with our partners in industry, they walk the facilities, they talk about the chemicals, they talk about how would we respond, not only to protect the community, but we wanna res respond and help their workers. How can we share that information amongst our other first responders, among our commissioners, judge, and our other stakeholders that need to respond? And we've had excellent uh, rapport with those. We've done about 50 of those. Due to COVID, it was a little bit slower than we would have liked it to have been, but just one pre-plan can take up to three days to work with these, with these partners. But we're seeing a lot of uh, exciting things happen with communication. And I think that's the thing that we really want to say that the support from the community, our stakeholders, commissioner's court is tremendous. We're gonna continue moving forward. We look forward to uh, our social media platforms and the other things that we can do to work with our partners in the ACC to get this information out so that our residents feel confident of their environment, of 
our response and how we can better communicate with them. Thank you, and Judge Hidalgo, I'll turn it to you. Thank you, Chief Christensen and, and, and Commissioner Garcia for making all of this possible, and everybody who spoke, Dr. Babin, um, Dr. Beydoun, we'll take questions now from the pool. Judge, if you could speak uh, to the neighbors who live next to these uh, chemical plants, what, what would you tell them if you could speak directly to them? Yeah, look, we, we have an opportunity in Harris County to reach a balance between making sure that we continue to be a competitive in, in area, the future of industry, and making sure that we can raise healthy families. And I think up until now, and what I've heard from communities, from families, in neighborhoods that live in the shadow of industry, is that they feel in some ways that we've forgotten, that they also deserve a healthy life. So I want folks to know that we know this, and we're working to protect you and to find that balance, to work with industry actors that play by the rules, and to hold those that don't play by the rules accountable. And so Harris County is not going to throw its hands up in the air, far from it. What we're doing is making sure that as your county government, we're doing everything we can to protect the community, protect our environment in ways that individuals simply can't do alone. Um, it's not all up to us. We can't write the laws, but we can help enforce them. We can monitor the air, and we can make sure that the community has the information they deserve. So I hope communities that have felt forgotten see a partner now in county government and see in our investments um, and in our new materials, our new tools, our new commitment to collaboration, that, that this is action, that this is proactive action, and it's not just reactive words. Um, I have some questions um, that are off topic. Can you take those now? Go ahead. Um, everybody would like an update on uh, the virus. Uh, how many people are on the wait list? How many people have we served? That type of thing. As of 11 o'clock this morning, we had 146,026 residents on the vaccine wait list. So far, Harris County has administered 28,000 938 vaccines, and we are poised to go through our entire supply by the end of this week. So we continue to work efficiently. The bottom line is we have to be patient. We have to remember that as we've known since last year, there won't be enough supply until probably late spring or summer for the majority of residents to be able to, to get the vaccine. But we're doing what we can um, to make sure that there is a fair and equitable and efficient approach to get vaccines to members of the community. This isn't something that we're gonna solve overnight. I want to remind folks to set expectations. It's gonna take some time for us to reach herd immunity. But we are fighting so that if you're a, a 92 year old veteran without internet, or if you're a 30 year old worker that can't sit there all day waiting for a website sign up link to open up, that you have a fair chance to register for the vaccine. And we're going to continue doing that. And look, we continue to request more doses from the state and from the federal government. Right now, the limiting factor is the doses. We have the ability to get these doses out the door within days. We have the capacity to get more doses out the door. We've got plenty of people on a wait list. And so let this be an another call to the state and the federal government for more vaccines with the recognition, with the recognition that, that I know we need supplies to catch up and supply chains to catch up. So for residents, uh, remember you can register for our wait list at readyharris.org or by calling 832 927-8787, and that phone line is in Spanish, English, and Vietnamese, and, and we're working on more languages. Uh, can you talk a little about what are, what are you expecting in terms of delivery of vaccine? Do you have any idea uh, what Harris County is going to be getting in the near future? What we have so far 
is we've been receiving roughly about 9,000 vaccines a week. Obviously, that's not enough for a county of around 5 million residents, around 2 million of whom qualify for 1A and 1B. And so we are gearing up to be able to distribute up to 30,000 vaccines a week at least. And that's where as soon as the supply chains catch up, we'll be able to get that out the door. Uh, and, and I know there are partners around the county also uh, capable of delivering those vaccines. But right now, what we've been getting the past couple of weeks is around 9,000. And that's what we also expect this next week. And you, you better believe we're advocating for more. But I don't want to set false expectations from the community that we have any news that a whole lot more are coming because we're, we've yet to understand how President Biden's announcement, for example, of a couple of days ago, if that's going to trickle down to us receiving significantly more vaccines soon. Okay. Are you confident the supply will be there for the second um, vaccine, the individuals that have already had one, that there will be a second available? So individuals who receive a vaccine through Harris County, when you receive a vaccine, you'll be scheduled for your second dose. So you don't have to worry about, you know, how will I know to come back for my second dose? And, and those that, that are selected out of the wait list, that's how we're doing it. This week already, we delivered uh, around 4,000 second doses. And we have a system in Harris County to make sure and keep track of those and get them into the arms of people uh, who already got the first dose. Um, We've been assured by the state and the federal government that we'll continue receiving the supply that we need in order to get those second doses. And if it begins to look like that's not the case, we'll be the first ones to sound the alarm. But right now, we do have assurances from the suppliers that, that they'll be sending us at least enough vaccines in order to meet that second dose. Okay. And at this point, um, in terms of individuals signing up, has that been smoothed out on the internet? phone calls where they can get in and make an appointment. Yeah, remember, there's there's no rush to sign up. It's a randomized process. So every time we receive a vaccine shipment, we'll pull out of that pool of applicants uh, randomly and with, with the 1A prioritized over 1B and older residents prioritized over younger residents. But within that, it's a random system. So I invite folks to go on and apply. I know the first day the website was in and out, as is expected with these websites, because we, you get a lot of people trying to register at the same time. But now that, that, that the registration has, has uh, stabilized uh, to a steady stream, we haven't had any issues with the website, certainly not all of yesterday, uh, not, not since uh, Tuesday night, we haven't had issues with the website. And same with the call lines. I want to give a big shout out to the, the workers of those call lines. They took over 70,000 calls on Tuesday, uh, at least 20,000 calls uh, on Wednesday and they continue to work our public health frontline workers incredibly hard. So, you know, go ahead and register for the wait list. It's smooth. And if, if any, it's not going to go down unless there is uh, some sort of technical upgrade that needs to be done. That website is, we're not going to shut it down. So you have time. And if you register tomorrow versus next week, you're still going to be pulled from a, a randomized uh, group of registrants. That's all I have, Judge. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.